Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today we are doing a head-to-head -head showdown comparing two of the most premium electric motorcycles on the market that you can actually buy. I'm speaking, of course, of the Zero SRF and the Harley-Davidson Livewire. Now I want to start off by saying, first of all, both of these are incredible electric motorcycles. I have had a blast on both of them, and if you had either of them, you would be incredibly lucky. That being said, each one has its own pros and cons, and of course everyone has their own personal preferences, so we're going to put these two bikes head to head so it can help you decide which one is right for you. Believe it or not, these two bikes actually have quite a bit in common with each other, at least more than you might think. From the outset, these are both high-power, naked electric street bikes, making just north of 100 horsepower or around 80 kilowatts each. They're both tech-infused with IMU-based rider aids like lean-angle-based traction control and cornering ABS. They both have TFT touchscreen displays that give you four different ride modes of sport, street, rain, and eco, each of which varies the power and throttle mapping plus regenerative braking for different ride scenarios. They both have Gates carbon belt drive systems and fully adjustable Showa suspension. They share large capacity batteries with the Zero at 14.4 kilowatt hours and the Livewire at 15.5. They both have dual four piston brakes up front, though the Livewire has a two piston setup in the rear while the Zero uses a single piston rear brake. And the Harley also has Brembo mono blocks, while Zero is always stuck with J Juans. Each has fans of their own that will say one is better than the other, though they're both great setups. So as you can see, on paper, these bikes are actually quite similar in many ways, but it's the differences that really interest us, and the biggest difference probably starts in the drivetrain. Zero mounts its Z4 7510 air-cooled motor coaxially with the rear swing arm pivot while the Livewire has an innovative, perpendicularly mounted, liquid-cooled motor slung beneath the battery that requires a 90-degree bevel gear to get that power back in line with the rear wheel. Zero also wraps the battery in a steel trellis frame, while Harley uses a cast aluminum frame. From there, we get to a spec showdown, which I'm not a huge fan of because I believe there's more to a bike than just its spec sheet, but comparing the numbers is of course always interesting. So when it comes to power, Zero has a slight edge, just like it does with speed. Not that most of us will be able to take advantage of either bike's top speed on a daily basis. Interestingly though, the Livewire often scores better in acceleration tests, with the SRF's 0-60 time of 3.65 seconds getting pretty handily beaten by the Livewire's time of 3.02 seconds. For range, the Zero gets slightly better specs on paper, but real-world tests have shown the Livewire to do slightly better in head-to-head matchups under realistic riding conditions, thanks to a slightly better efficiency and a slightly larger battery. The Livewire is quite hefty though, at 549 pounds, compared to the lighter weight SRF at 498 pounds. In my experience, the weight wasn't that noticeable while riding, but certainly while maneuvering the bikes around in the garage and the driveway, the Livewire felt a good bit heavier. The other major spec difference is in charging. Both can charge on level 1 chargers at home, with the Zero charging around 25% faster in an overnight level 1 charge. The Zero has an edge with level 2 charging, which takes between 1.5 to 2 hours depending on how depleted your battery is, while the Livewire skips level 2 charging entirely and instead offers level 3 DC fast charging, which can top up the battery in around 40 to 50 minutes. While that's faster charging, there aren't that many DC fast charging stations in many cities, yet. The other thing is that the live wire can technically connect to level 2 chargers, it just won't charge at level 2 speeds. Instead, it's going to use that slow level 1 overnight charging speed. So there we go, in just a head-to-head -head spec showdown, the Zero seems to edge out the live wire. But there's more than just the numbers. There's also the feel, the ride quality, and of course the build quality of the bikes. From my experience, the fit and finish on the Livewire is just a level above the SRF. Harley has been building motorcycles for a long time and they really know how to make a premium product. Zero's not a startup anymore, but they also don't have the same design chops as Harley, plus they aim for a broader market and thus they don't take quite as many design risks to ensure that they can please as many eyes as possible. Still, little things like body panel gaps not quite lining up right on the SRF 
have always kind of irked me, and when you put the bike side to side, the higher level of fit and finish on the live wire becomes quite apparent. Even things like the switches just look and feel nicer on the live wire. Though is nicer build quality worth an extra 10 grand? I don't know, that's a personal choice. When you get out on the road, both of these bikes are a dream to ride. They have power that just feels endless and torque that could make a burly, bearded strongman giggle like a schoolgirl. Both these bikes launched like they were built for it, because they were. That electric power off the line is addicting, and it will make the hair on your neck stand on end. When I get into the twisties, I feel like the live wire is a bit more comfortable and confidence inspiring in terms of holding a line, but both bikes are surprisingly easy to ride. I'm not a crazy aggressive rider or anything, and you won't see me trying to drag knee on every turn, but both bikes do give me the urge to push myself just a bit more, and they reward you for it too. Going back and forth between the two, I find that the live wire is a bit more comfortable for me, but now that the Zero SRS is out, and it's being marketed as a more relaxed and comfortable ride compared to the SRF, Zero could be back in the game there. As it stands, the SRF is nice and aggressive, if that's what you're looking for, but I appreciate the laid-back ride of the live wire just as much. And when I want to rip on it, the faster acceleration of the live wire comes alive, and it reminds you that this is not a cruiser. It's every bit as aggressive on the road. Between the two, I'd probably opt for the live wire myself if I could afford it, but at $30,000, it's just not in the cards for me, people. To be fair, the SRF isn't exactly cheap either at around $20,000, but it's certainly within reason for a much wider selection of riders than the Livewire. And while I'd love to be able to pay extra for the nicer build of the Livewire, the best bike is the one you've got. And to be honest, I had a blast on the Zero SRF's baby brother, the Zero FXS, with its much smaller motor, so maybe I'm just easy to please and happy to be out there on the road. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed that comparison of the Zero SRF and the Harley-Davidson Livewire electric motorcycles. Which one is right for you? That's a personal preference. If you like this video, we hope you'll give it a thumbs up, and of course, please subscribe to Electric's YouTube channel so you can keep track of all of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.